Hey, what's up? We should be live. Let me know you can hear me well as always. I'm just gonna open up my uh, uh, my stream here uh, on my end. Put my phone in silent. And I just wanna make, oh, there we go. There I am. So I'm streaming using, um, Hey, what's up? We should be live. There we go. I'm Let hearing myself. <laughs> I'll mute this. <laughs> Uh, so I'm streaming using uh, OBS this time and I actually cannot see your comments unless I put my phone right in front of me. So thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. Uh, today's gonna be a fun one. Uh, we will paint using a very difficult technique. As you know, wet and wet is not simple. Uh, it's something that takes a while getting used to. Um, and I want us to experiment with a few specific aspects of the technique here, okay? Um, I want us to really go for that um, expression fully in wet and wet blended. And you're gonna see, we're gonna have a crazy demo. I have no idea how it's gonna work out, but we'll give it a try, okay? So let me see who's in the house. I opened up my chat here. On my end, I see Laurie Burton. Uh, my hand says, good morning. We have Jonathan here, good evening. We have TJ says, good morning. Sujanith, my friend, how are you? Uh, hope you're doing well. This is your favorite technique in watercolor, wet and wet, super cool. Uh, Laura says, Bronx in the laundry room. Uh, John, hey, hey, how are you? Hi, Leron, hope you're well, my friend. Hi, everyone. So thank you so, so much for being here. And I will devote some time to the chat. Uh, let me jump into what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna open up a reference photo, just to give you an example. Uh, I mean, it's gonna be what we'll try and paint, but just to give you, um, an, an example of how this technique, at least I wanna use it. So you often see these beautiful landscapes with maybe the horizon and the mountains are so far away that they're kind of a blue that fades into uh, the distance and, and that wet and wet helps you create that feeling uh, of softness and, and of distance. But sometimes you also see scenes like this one where look at that. So basically it's a, you know, a car's windshield uh, or, or just a window. And I'm going to I'm going to post a link. I just want to make sure that you have it. Um, I'm going to post it in the chat. I don't have it in the description, so you'll have to forgive me. Now let me do this. I just finished uploading a video, so hopefully it doesn't slow down the connection. But in any case, everything here is super blurry, as you can see, and to express this kind of a thing wet and wet and get that blurry feeling is very complex and then you can add those water droplets that we're actually uh, focused on which is a cool effect but first you have to get that background wash and um, this is the way I see it this is taking wet and wet the farthest it can go to the the ultimate hardest application we're gonna try and do a bit of that here I'll probably fail that's how I at least something I can hint towards um, but but we will learn a lot in the process. So let me open this up. I'm gonna make myself smaller. There we go. And I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna also add a black and white version. Uh, let me see here, one second. Black, white. Uh, because it is important if you're trying to orient yourself and, and paint this insanely difficult thing, right? Um, now, don't take it to mean that you have to paint this way. You definitely don't. Uh, my point here is sh to show you the ultimate, probably one of the hardest applications of it. You can use it for much simpler things, for much uh, easier you know, things. So um, let's see who's in the house. Once again, we're gonna go over some messages and then we'll uh, get started. We have Cesar here, good morning. Uh, David uh, says, hey. Uh, Timefti says, hi from Greece. Nancy G, morning from Akron, Ohio. Looking forward to this. Uh, Frank Librand, greetings from uh, Beaufort, South Carolina. A. A. Hudson, good morning from Akron. A. A. Ohio is really in the house. Uh, just chilling, says, hey, right. I'm early for once. Awesome. Caesar says, hi from Bogota. Uh, just chilling, hope everyone's doing great today. Andrea uh, Gale says, hello from Germany. So just uh, to, to quickly drop this into the, into the stream as well. Uh, uh, Happy New Year, really soon, right? So uh, we're almost there. Hopefully we can put 2021 behind us and, and also 2020, I mean, these two years have been crazy. 
Uh, so hopefully we can move forward with our lives and things open up a bit. Um, I had a flight to the US on May that was just canceled out of nowhere. You know, I hate these things where you can't even plan your life, you know. Uh, but in any case, yeah. Let us zoom in on this, okay? The old fashioned way of moving the tripod. There we go. Just a bit. Um, because we're not going to use the reference photos yet, okay? I just want to show you some of that technique. So wet and wet, as most of us are familiar with at least the basic gist of it, involves simply pre-wetting our paper. And don't worry, it's going to hopefully focus in just one second. So pre-wetting our paper, uh, which then enables us to take advantage of one of watercolor's most unique characteristics, which is the flow. Right, that's something that is just unparalleled. You can get it in other mediums, but not to the same extent, right? And let me show you, I'm really soaking up the pap paper. You can see it, the light reflecting, super duper wet, right? And then if we start just injecting some paint into it, right? So because this is super watery, we can inject some super watery paint and we'll be okay, right? We'll, we'll do good. There's a bit of extra here, so let me um, I'm gonna make myself tinier. Sorry, I have to show you a bit of the towel at least. So I'm gonna wipe on the towel and soak some of it back out, right? Now, the the thicker the mix we're gonna use, the more it's gonna show, of course, right? So if I mix something a little stronger, and I'm gonna fill in my uh, ultramarine soon, or maybe we'll work monochromatically, who knows? But you see, the thicker I mix it, the more it's gonna show, right? But still, because of all of the wetness, check it out, this is all gonna dry much lighter. Now, this is something I urge you to do as much as possible to practice this technique. All you really have to do is pre-wet an area and, and do this and play around with it and figure out how the paint reacts, how it responds to different thicknesses, different timing, right? What happens is we have two very important variables here. One is how wet is the paper, right? So right now it's still very wet and it's gonna start drying right after a minute or two or three it's gonna start drying the other factor is how thick our paint is right and the thicker the paint is the more it's gonna stay where you put it but it's still gonna spread out a bit right And if you use it straight out of the uh, pen that's you have more of a guarantee that it's gonna stay where it's at right now as the paper dries you are forced to use stronger and stronger paint because um, if you use wet paint, wetter than on paper, it's going to spread everything out and I'm going to show you. Okay, I know this is kind of a revisiting concepts maybe some of you have seen recently, me talk about as well, but it's it's worth mentioning. So let me go back here on the top and, and my brush now is very wet. Okay, you can see it's sparkly, it's shiny, it's very wet. I just dipped it in the water and did a minimum dabbing, right? This area started to dry. Can you see how some of the sheen is gone? So if I'm gonna do this now, what's gonna happen is instead of the paint staying here, it's gonna start spreading out what's already there. Okay, and it's gonna be very subtle to see, very hard to see at the beginning, but it's gonna take effect and create these blossoms. See, it's spread out the paint. So the drier the paper gets, the thicker the paint you use must be. Now, right now it's it's not that serious, right? But if it's if we let it dry further and then come back with wet paint, it's going to be very visible, right? Now, it's not the end of the world. Doesn't mean the painting is ruined if you get these back backgrounds and cauliflowers um, because, you know, you have some other layers and you can darken things and you can fix mistakes, right? But just wanted to show you. Now, one thing that I'm, one effect that I'm really working towards achieving is those skies where the clouds, you can see some of them and they move down a bit like this, there are stripes. So I'm gonna show you real fast how I do this and then we're gonna look at some of the chat. And if you have any wet and wet related questions, now's the time to ask, right? So I'm gonna pre-wet my paper. And I'm gonna keep a gap so that this doesn't <laughs> flow into that, okay? Just pre-wetting my paper. The water is not fully, uh, perfectly clear now, but that's fine. And I want to show you something. If we just allow this a few seconds to just begin to dry. Okay, so right now it's still super wet, right? If we just allow this a few more, and now you can start to see the background, right? Look at that. It really spread out the paint, right? So just something to watch out for. So I'm going to give this a few seconds to dry. I want to show you something interesting. 
once this starts to dry, if I come back with very strong paint, very strong paint, and I'll, I tilt the page, what you're gonna get is this beautiful effect that very often is utilized in clouds and skies, okay? Now I may get the timing off. I'm gonna do my best to get it right, but it's not that easy, okay? Now it's still quite wet. Sorry for the lack of focus, it's still quite wet, okay? These exercises will translate to how well you can paint this scene that's right in front of us above, okay? These scenes aren't simple to paint. They take a lot of practice and a lot of this, right? A lot of working with the basic technique. So now it feels to me like it's started to dry. Just a bit, just a hint, you see? A bit less of a sheen. Well, let's give it a try. So I mix here something fairly wet, fairly thick. I'm using my neutral tint and I'm just gonna do this and then let's tilt and let's see what happens. You see how it starts to spread out? Let's do it in another spot and see what happens. This may be too thick, right? I'm testing it out now. And by the way, you can use uh, your water sprayer to help it uh, spread out a bit, right? So this I may have overshot it, so now it's like even too dry. Let me just get some water, spray it. Should help it move a bit, okay? But with a very extreme angle, it should move down, and sometimes you can help it move down also by spraying it directly, right? And look at this beautiful effect that we have here. But you see how the paint starts to move and I don't think the camera will be able to focus like that but can you see these little fibers I don't know how to call them but it's actually stripes moving down so it's just a really cool effect and that's how so the timing here was pretty good actually so, and that's how sometimes you see skies that that are yellow and then they have some gray clouds on them you can see this with many artists many impressionistic artists that's how you get that effect if you want the clouds to stay intact Sometimes you have to mix a paint that's much thicker, you can see it here, than you would expect. Okay, it's just very unexpected sometimes, which is why I wanted to show you this. Remember how strong the paint was. Let's give it another go now that it starts to dry here above, okay? We're obviously going to destroy this little section, but let's, let's give it a try. Maybe with a bit of a wetter paint, though you have to be careful now, because remember, it's going to start drying. Right, so this feels a little too wet. So a bit more paint. Let's see what happens here. Let's see what timing we'll get here. So this is too wet, I think. I think it may be too wet, but let's let's try another one somewhere around here. This is still quite wet, right? So you see the shapes stay intact. They blend a bit, but they stay intact. Sometimes, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but sometimes you'll see works describing underwater conditions or uh, the surface of the ocean. And very often you'll see among the fumes of water, you'll see these darker spots. That's actually how this effect is achieved sometimes. So if I would have used blue here and given the right context, this may have appeared like the surface of water. So there's a lot that this effect can achieve and, it, it, and it's really amazing what you can do with it. But you have to make sure to get that, right, that strength enough. You see how thick the paint was? And look at how much it, it spreads out. Same here, this is gonna dry out a little lighter in this, okay? just to give you that kind of brief uh, idea. What I'm gonna do with this space, I think, is do a, an initial attempt at, one, at these, this scene, right? I have just a colorful version, black and white version, and we can do like an initial, very small sketch attempt of it, right? Um, so let's see what you're saying in the chat here. Uh, we have a lot of people in the house. Thank you so much for being here. Um, so we have Alison Carway, hello from England. We have Yoshi, hi from Bulgaria. We have Alessandro, my friend says hi. We have Medi uh, Medini, uh, hi from India. We have Dustin, happy to join from Republic of Congo. Paul O'Meara, good morning, hello from Canada. Uh, Petra Gunther says hello from Germany. Heavy rain on my window, cool. So it's a similar scene then. Uh, and Thanga says hello. Aaron Litton, stuck at the train. Uh, signal on my way to work, so I finally have time to watch the live stream. Just drive carefully, right? Um, uh, Messon says streak. Uh, well, this, these are streaks. I, I don't know if you refer to these, but let me know. Sujanit so says beautiful effect with thick paint on semi-dried paper. Exactly. Uh, John says, Liron, how do you avoid blue uh, in yellow turning green when painting a sunshine sky? Yeah, there are a few ways of doing that, I can explain. Uh, in the first wash, are all the colors used the same strength pigment? Yes, uh, for me they're similar, so what dictates to me how strong the paint is isn't the color itself, but rather the setting and the wet and wet. So I'll use the same strength for blue, for yellow, and so on, okay? As for your first question, 
sometimes I'll start blue and then I'll use some water, just clear water, and then switch to yellow. It means the middle may be a little lighter, but it's not gonna be that noticeable. I will also say that, for example, the painting I have uh, hung right behind me that you can probably barely see. Let me see if I can, let's move this out of the way for a second. Oh, you know what, maybe I can find, maybe I can find it. Um, it's just not that noticeable, that's my point. No one will really notice if, uh, if you go to, um, if you go too green in the middle, if you mix them and they, they may seem to you a little green, but for the most part they aren't. Um, I just don't know if I'll be able to find this painting. You know it, it's the one that's hung behind me on the wall. Uh, but honestly, this, this doesn't usually matter. Um, yeah, I can't find it now. But in any case, um, send me a message, I'll try and find it. Usually it, it just doesn't matter as much. Um, I can try and demo it. Uh, we can actually do a quick demo here, or maybe okay. I'll do I'll do it on a, one of my test papers. So let's test it out. It will also depend on the paint. Now I do need to refill my uh, again ultramarine. So let me grab a bit of that. This is phthalo. Actually, I also need my phthalo blue. So let's fill that up as well. So some phthalo blue here. There we go. It's been a while since I refilled my blues. Uh, 999 God's Love says Sheena from Australia. Thank you for being here. Ramona is also here. Hello from uh, Minnesota. Uh, I made a, a live a live one. Yes, definitely welcome aboard. Uh, hello from Mexico City says Arturo Fernandez. And let us, if we can just find my ultramarine blue. There we go. I think it should be this one. Yeah. Got it. Because we're gonna need it. We're gonna need it. I think we're gonna use a lot of neutral tint here, honestly, but we will probably need ultramarine as well. See, it really blended out. There's this artist, I forgot his name, but he does a lot of this with water. And it looks like fully realistic water, it's pretty amazing. Um, so let's say that we're mixing blue, and you know how I like to mix. I like to use very organic mixes, right? So this is a blue, right? It's there we go, it's, it's a painting I cut. So I'll need to blue it up a little more, but let's actually do it like this. Oh yeah, I, I accidentally took the thalo blue, but that's fine, that's fine. So let's say, which is, it's, which is quite strong, right? So it will probably not uh, explain the point uh, that well, but let's mute it a bit, right? So here we have that blue. Now, as we switch to yellow, sometimes again, I like to keep a gap like this, and then I'll take my yellow and kind of combine it. And you can even go a little higher. And probably because of the temperature here, no one really cares that this is, you know, that maybe a bit of blue was created in the middle, right? It's just a nice little transition. And you can spray on it if it doesn't move enough, right? Just go like this, keep it at an angle, you see? It starts to seep in. But it doesn't really matter, once it dries, no one will think, oh, there's green in the middle. Um, now, another way I found that I have mentioned before uh, is to use a bit of um, opaque white paint. So what you do is you start with the blue and then you start adding a bit of, for example, uh, my uh, June Brilliant or titanium, buff titanium, and you add that to the mix and then you switch to yellow. And what will happen is it will just create this milkiness in the middle that, that will mask any mixing, okay? I hope it makes sense. It's a bit of a weird idea. I, I think I have demoed it before. What I will mention though in this stage is sometimes you wanna avoid using opaque paints in the beginning, right? You wanna start transparent. Just just a note to have in mind. Um, Chimefti says, strange thing happened to me. My paper was kinda instantly drying. I kept putting water in spring, but couldn't keep it wet. Does this have to do with the sizing of paper turning bad maybe? I'm not sure. It will depend on what paper you're using. Uh, it will depend a bit on the weather and humidity, um, but if you're using decent paper, it shouldn't happen. I'm using the Baohong for this demo. Uh, I wonder I wonder what will happen. We'll give it a try, but um, if you just go over it with a brush, it should be okay. Go over it, over it twice. That's how I did it here. I'm going to show you here as well. Uh, but yeah, sorry, I don't have a good insight about, about that, unfortunately. I'm not sure, not quite sure. Uh, it will depend on the brand itself. 
And Ayansi said love and lights to all from Houston. Thanks for... Oh, by the way, and I forgot to mention, thank you for the uh, 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 love of art. You got it. Yeah. Uh, we talked about Happy New Year. Yeah. Uh, we'll do the wishes later on. By the way, Saturday's video uh, is going to be uh, New Year by the time Saturday rolls around, uh, rolls up on us. And I'm not going to mention their Happy New Year because I filmed it in advance and I didn't remember. So sorry, I'm telling you now. Um... I'm in highly run. I was wondering how long normally it should take when we use a hair dryer to dry our paintings first wash. Not too long, like a minute maybe from a, from a distance. Don't go straight on the paper because it can burn it. David Olivares says hello from Earth. Uh, Claudio Santos, hello from Brazil. We have Reza um, uh, Jamshidi, highly run. You are great. Love the way you teach. Thank you so much. Joanne says, which paint do you use? Uh, neutral tint. Here it's neutral tint by Daniel Smith. I actually have it to show you. I have a bunch of these to show you. So here's the neutral tint. And I actually have a bag here with... It got stuck to my sap green. Yeah. And I have a bag with another one. And I have a bag with another one. So I, I have a plan to use a lot of neutral tint in the upcoming... Uh, months, weeks. Uh, paint and brush, someone is from Earth. Yeah. Monica NJ, good morning, Liron, and everyone, happy new year to all. Josephine Rivera, good morning from uh, Niagara. Uh, Josephine, I actually have a character in my upcoming manga named Josephine, so that's gonna be fun. Uh, I love this name. Picolina, hello, Liron, Monica NJ, are we doing the rain photo? <laughs> uh, I'm excited, yeah, yeah, we're gonna try. So I'm gonna try it out here. So it's not gonna be easy, once again, this isn't, uh, your typical subject and it, it does take wet and wet to its fullest extent right uh, so let me start by profusely pre-wetting the paper you need it to be really really uh, wet and I actually cleaned my water bucket but there was some color residue in, in the bottom which is why it's not perfectly white so forgive me for that now I want to show you, look at how wet that is, right? But that's not enough. I have to go over it with another layer of water, especially uh, for this kind of paper that I'm using. I'm using uh, the Bao Hong and it's fairly thick, you know, 300 grams is nothing to sneeze at. <laughs> I think I made that up, but I'm not sure. Uh, so you need to make sure you pre-wet it properly. Now the beautiful part is you can start fairly light, right? So I'm gonna get started with whatever grain mix I have here and we'll start from this left corner. Do not take any chances. And the only thing we need to pay attention to is this right section should be a little uh, lighter, right? And you start by kind of sculpting it out, okay? Everything in the left side, I'm just gonna use neutral tint. It's gonna be easier, especially for this initial attempt. Uh, everything in this left side, um, it's gonna be darker, but the right side should stay untouched, okay? Now, as the paint starts to dry very slowly, it's still quite wet, um, we'll need to start darkening stronger and stronger. Now, everything you see here is going to dry much lighter. This will probably dry as dark as this needs to be, and this needs to be fairly light. So, just have that in mind. Um, and we'll gradually do this. This is a technique I'm notoriously bad at. Okay, I will be the first to admit I'm not that good at this thing so we'll see how it goes we may end up with a too high key version of everything uh, I'm not really sure we'll just have to give it a go right uh, and the, the way you do this technique is just by darkening gradually so here we have a bit of that background a lower section right uh, and if you feel like it starts to dry you can use uh, a uh, the sprayer once again just to darken things up a little now here's what I'm gonna do I'm starting to get close to what I want the next step is to bring out the car now the way to bring out the car will be to darken everything around the car because that's how we do it now we're gonna work from light to dark so I'm gonna start with this building here and I didn't draw anything by the way did you notice I'm just uh, this is just a kind of a sketchy quick attempt okay so these are the buildings right Squint your eyes if you need to see them a little more accurately. I'm actually looking at the small black and white version now. I'm not even looking at the colorful version. Now, you can darken around the cars or you can lift back the details of the cars. We're gonna use both here. So for example, I think I need to lift back those signs or whatever these are here. So, I'm gonna take another brush, dry it, 
and it kind of will lift back, see? These signs or whatever that is. Now this is a risk, what I just did, because I'm essentially drying some of the paper. Uh, so I can't do too much wet and wet there. But now we can start, you know, bringing out the car. So let's try and bring out this car in the front and see what happens. And again, this is this technique is not simple. Okay, what, I, what I've tried to do now is very challenging, and I'll most likely not get a lot of it right, but I'm, I at least want to get some of it right. You know, and the thing is, that the only way to really get this super blended look is by doing this technique. Okay, um, so I do see a dark car there behind somewhere and another dark car. Should have probably drawn, uh, but we'll do it in the bigger attempt. Now, here's how we draw the, again, lighter car. We're just lifting. We're gonna lift the top like that. We're gonna lift this separation between the, see? Windshield or whatever that is. I'm gonna lift back this detail here. And we, we hopefully can slowly carve out something, right? And then this goes here, and it actually um, goes a little lighter here. The tires are in the wrong spot, but that's fine. Let's mute some of them like that. You can also come back with some water or with a damp brush, and the water will push aside the paint, right? Something like this. Now, if you do this on a uh, hot press paper, uh, I'm not that uh, experienced with it, but I do know that you can get a bit more of time, I think, to work because the paint stays a little more on the surface, right? Uh, so something like that. So we kind of carved out a part of the car, right? There's a bit of a dark section here. Let's get that in. And a lot of it is repetition. I'm going to have to repeat this uh, step a few times or you can use the tissue to just lift directly from paper which sometimes I'll do so let me show you I'm just throwing at you the variety of ways to do this you see like this this window should be a little narrower should go like this right so it looks like a shape of a car we have this little um, on the road this line showing us where it is right there's another one here, but I haven't even gotten like some of the larger shapes in yet, so uh, I don't really have to work on that yet. And let's lift a bit. If you want to see someone who does that really well, there's an artist by the name of something Cambronelli, maybe Robert. I think I showed his work before, uh, and some of you are familiar with it. So he does this <laughs> florals, so just florals, and it's pretty spectacular to watch. Okay, um, and then lift back maybe a light or two that we see somewhere here. We have maybe a tail light here and there. Right. And we lost some of that, so we'll do that. And you can just spend time, you know, editing, play or playing around with that and seeing where you can get. Right now, the drier it gets, the more control you have on the one hand but the less time you have, right? So right now, if I'm gonna put some paint here, it's gonna really stay in its spot. So I have more control, but things are drying, so I have to work a little fast, right? You see a bit of a darkness there. I actually feel like this area up top, which is a huge risk, should be a little lighter, so I can just bring some water in, lighten it up, but we will get some backgrounds, right? Uh, something like that. But hopefully, you know, something starts to happen there. Uh, the shape of the car is, of course, all wrong. Draw, it will help. One thing that will uh, help design the car a bit is that this should be much lower. So let me bring back some of this and you'll see it slowly start to connect, probably, hopefully. This also. So you see one car alone is a huge project to get. So. You don't have to go for such a complex scene at first. I should have probably cropped the reference photo first. But now you see, designing it around the tire. Now it starts to look a little like the tire up front, right? 
And for fun, we can add some droplets later on, but see how crazy this technique is? Uh, if you can get good at this, you will be able to convey fantastic things with watercolor. It's just really difficult. Um, I'm not even sure if I can lift mo any more here, so we'll try, we'll see what happens. And again, just to give you some reference as to this condition of paper, it's almost dry, you see? But that's how you'd go about this process. Um, one thing that could improve it a bit, now you can't really spray now, I think it's too late. But one thing that can really improve the top of the car is to contrast it with something a little stronger. I do see a bit of that here. Just to bring out the roof of the car a little better. And have this continue up top maybe. I do see like a street light or something like that. Now it's almost dry, right? Just you'll get the, the bare minimum of movement right now. Um, but yeah, that's the main idea, right? Well, it takes a lot of effort to control it this way. So what I want us to try and do, and there's of course the matter of, of color, right? So you see uh, a lot of it, it's getting hot. <laughs> a lot of the, um, the effect is also in combination with color. So this is what Joseph Bukovic does really well, adding that red color. So we can try and do just a bit. Uh, it's not too light, actually. The thing that gives it its strength here is not the how light it is. It's actually uh, how saturated it is or how strong it is. So let me try and convey that. I have my trusty coffee here that I haven't even taken a sip of. <laughs> One sip of. Um, let's dry this up. Let's get rid of that. Let's see if we can maybe add just a bit of, you know, color to it not even sure how that will work but it needs to be very light yeah so I don't like it because everything should be darker um, so as I told you we end up with a fairly light version of this scene so let me get rid of this just do it like very faint uh, because everything here should have been a little uh, a little darker Okay, so we're gonna try and implement what we learned here for the actual thing. This time with a drawing, right? Don't, don't go rogue like I did here. I am gonna take a sip of my trusty coffee and look at some of your comments. And thank you so much. We have quite a lot of people here today, that's fun. Um, Aaron Black says, hello everybody. Uh, a bit late today, no worries. Thank you for being here. I can actually look at it here too. Um, Joanne says, do you use all Daniel Smith uh, paints? In this example, I think I am. This is everything, uh, just Daniel Smith. The blue is Daniel Smith, phthalo blue, ultramarine, neutral tint, um, uh, pile of scarlet, it's all uh, Daniel Smith here. Yeah, it's super hard painted brush. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna do my best to get something close there. Uh, Marie says, hello from California, thanks for sharing your artwork. David Alvarez says, uh, P and B, it looks soft. Uh, be one with the water, do not fear it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, what is hot press? Hot press is smooth surface paper. So this has a bit of tooth. Um, Monica, this is great. If I tried this, it would look like a blob. Yeah, it's, it still looks a bit like a blob, but yeah. Uh, Rusty, uh, Rusty Toddler says, I made it. Uh, Just Chillin says, already loving how soft and dreamy the scene looks. Uh, thank you so much. Carmen at Avalos High, I really like your tutorials. I watched them from Mexico. Cool, cool. So happy I can help. And uh, thank you so much for watching. You have great control of the pigment. Yes, somewhat good. Uh, working on it. Wet and wet is huge. It's it just, there's so much to learn. Um, I keep trying to sharpen my senses, I guess. Um, John said, Liron, did you realize that your first post on YouTube was eight, seven years ago this week? Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I had no idea. Thank you so much, John. So if I go and filter and do the, the reverse of like um, the the from oldest to newest video, it's gonna be this week. That's pretty crazy. Uh, this is cold press, uh, Rusty. Agnes, did you mean Fabio Fabio Cambronelli? Yes, darn it, Fabio Cambronelli. He's incredible. Yeah. So he does this technique only better and with florals. Uh, so yeah. So let's set this aside and do another attempt. I have this 
a little piece of paper right here, a little larger. I can't believe I forgot Fabio's first name, uh, but he's pff, something else. So um, do I want to remove this? Maybe I'll dry it first. So let me just dry this for a second. I'm gonna mute you and come back in just, just a second or two. Yeah, so this will have to do, it's funny, I think we actually got that car in nicely. You know, it's not the full seed and not the full context, but that's really cool. That's neat. I like that effect. Now, let me hear your thoughts on this. Uh, as I replace uh, this paper in our experiments with a bit of a larger one, even though I don't think it's going to be wide, so maybe I'll cut it probably in half. I don't want to work super hard uh, and this this effect is hard to get enough as it is um, that's the thing I tell everyone when you get started you know don't try to jump above your belly button as they say um, some things are just really complex and um, if you tackle them yes you will learn of course but uh, you can learn a little more effectively if you paint closer to uh, your level and control uh, and to me I don't want to go crazy so this is um, I don't even remember. I usually have a set size of... Is this 31? Divided by 2, right? Yeah, okay. Good, good, good. 15 and a half. Just to make sure I cut it somewhere close to the middle. Look at look at the risk I'm taking now with this here. Um, there we go. You see me do some uh, managerial work. <laughs> this is what I do once in a while. Maybe cut a few pieces of paper. And the way I cut them uh, is without a ruler. So I just go like this. There we go. That turned out better than I expected. And now we have this full piece of paper that's a little larger than what we did before, double the size. Um, now let's see what we can do here. So again, not an easy technique, right? Let's use the other side. I'm gonna do the drawing fast, I promise. I don't wanna waste too much time on that but just to kind of set up the composition and everything. And at some point, the pencil lines may start to disappear. So you have to, to learn how to work with what you got, kind of like oil painters do, you know? Uh, at some point you draw with the oil or, you know, depending on your method, I, I've seen people do it multiple ways, but um, you draw with the, with the medium and, and then at some point you just gotta let go of lines and really work with shapes, um, which is another, very important concept. I'll talk about in the waterfall realism course. You're, you're going to hear a lot about lines versus shapes there. Uh, already finished editing two lectures. What, like 20 more to go? No, less than 20. It's not that long of a course. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, let's see if you're saying anything interesting. Which one is better, hot press or any other? Yeah, it's definitely a matter of choice. Uh, thumb up. It will depend on the way you like to uh, paint. I'm just gonna get this out of the way real fast. Horizon line, a little under the middle. Because we are seeing quite a bit of the buildings above. Then we have this one car here. I'm gonna try not to mess it up too badly. So this is approximately where perspective leads us, somewhere around here actually, that's fine, like that, then we have this line that's a little closer here, and we're going to plop the car in between, probably got some of it wrong, but that's fine, that's the back. front. I'm gonna try it so that it's at least clear enough that we can actually use it to paint, you know. 
should be much shorter probably or make the tires larger feels like it's been a while since I grew cars don't know why I mean I'm, I'm doing them all the time but I just didn't do a lot of cars for the 100 car challenge recently so that's probably why I'm rusty So that should be decent enough. And I can't see the details, of course, uh, because of how blurry the scene is. That's gonna be another car. Tail lights. Tail lights. Then we have another one smaller behind. And that's again just a blob, right? The only thing we see is the tail light here. There's another one that I didn't, didn't leave enough room for, but that's fine. We're gonna devote more attention to this then. Uh, the buildings and let's work with the shape so this is the edge we have a bit of details here but the rest is going to be quite white this is also an edge and then we'll have this I don't even know honestly if all of this will help me orient myself it may all just disappear the moment I start painting uh, but we'll try we will try it's not perfect, but it gives us something to work with, at least. Unlike the previous attempt where we had nothing to work with. Yeah, we're good. Um, do I want to fix this now? We'll just keep it like that. Now, there is a bit of a lighter section here. I like that. Should have poured myself wine for this kind of a, of a painting. It's gonna be very interesting to see what will happen. We do see some reflections of those tail lights, so who knows? Maybe I'll show them. And I think we're ready to go. Now, you don't have to paint everything in one go, believe it or not. You can paint parts of this wet and wet, but because I do want to treat this whole thing as one scene, I will paint it all in one go. But in any given painting, a big thing that, I, that I'm trying to do lately is to treat sections. So I can work a small controlled section and do a lot of wet and wet there and then move on to the next one. But here it's all blended together. Um, one more thing later, okay, just stay till, the, till after this process, I'm gonna try and add a few water droplets. We see, we'll see if we can get that effect. Okay, that effect isn't that hard to achieve, I think. The problem is the background, of course. Uh, but we'll see. And I'm, I'm curious to see if once we add those droplets, it will make the cars make more sense because it sends them to the background. So we'll see. David, thank you so much for uh, being here. <laughs> no worries. You can watch it after the fact. At least you haven't dipped your brush in it. Oh, in the coffee. <laughs> uh, happy anniversary. Thank you so much, Helen. Uh, Chimefti says... Uh, how and how many cars out of the hundred have you already done? I'm keeping score. Huh? Yeah, okay, so I think I'm, I finished 80. Car number 80 or 82, something like that. That's where I'm at, which isn't bad, I think, uh, out of 100. I'm at around 80%, I think a little more than 80. Okie doke, here we go. We're gonna, let's use this brush here. Actually, I'm gonna use uh, the large goat by Lebens and brushes I need something a little with more reach larger so the easiest step is what we're gonna start with which is pre-wetting the whole thing right and let's see what I can do here it's it's super challenging it really takes me to the limit of my abilities and I'll probably like it's hard enough with florals so I could only imagine with this kind of a scene uh, but I'll do my best I really will and of course you know uh, working on it while filming and, and talking is a little different but let me let me try maybe I'll just be a little more quiet for a few seconds and, and really absorb myself in the effect I'm after so let's start here for this entire start I can just tint everything except the right side because everything does need to go darker, actually. Especially the left side, right? Um, the thing is, this car, it's not white. It's not as light as this. And if you make it as light as this, it's going to be confusing. Remember, there's a, a matter of core shadow, right? The shadow that's... The, everything in it has to be darker 
than everything in the light. And that's something you want to make sure you achieve here. So I'm tinting everything. Now the question is just how much, right? So how much am I going to tint this? How much I'm going to make it darker? So let's gradually get this to be a little darker. It's very gradually. And yes, I'm more of a big fan of the alla prima approach. Just put the paint in and don't go over it too many times. Uh, but this is also an important skill uh, that I would like to practice. Let's spray some water, give us ourselves a little more time and control and see what happens on paper, right? Let's see if we're even in the right direction. And the angle matters here. If you have too steep of an angle, everything is going to move down. So you want to keep it a little controlled. Now, I almost feel like I wanted to dry a little more in some spots before I move on. But let's start with the corner here and see what happens. So now I have this little area that I want to keep a little lighter, right? Let's see how much control we can gain here. And I'll leave this gap, maybe play around with the angle a bit so it doesn't go down over this, again, slightly lighter section. And the painting is going to be an accumulation of everything together. So the more you can get accurately, the better it is. It's not it's not a binary success or failure. That's one thing I'll talk about a lot in the course as well. Um, it's really important to, to have that in mind because nothing is really like a full on failure. Um, the question is how much did you get right for the most part? Get rid of some of that excess paint here. And again, I'm observing, look at how light, look at how wet this still is, right? So control is still limited. So let's start darkening this lower section that I feel like is darker in many spots, especially this car. This car is still dark, right? And then you see there's a bit of a gap here. Maybe it's a you know street lamp or something in here as well. You just start, look at it, give it some time, see what happens, right? There's a darker patch here. So we can darken it a bit. Then below as well, but again, watch out for that angle so that it doesn't move away too much. And let's continue. This car is light, so I'm gonna work my way around, around it. Everything here is darker. It's kind of similar to normal painting where you just think what's the next darkest shape? Only a lot harder, <laughs> honestly. So yeah, so you see it starts to get to somewhere. Uh, this car here is fairly dark once again, so I can go ahead and, and look, we have time, like breathe, okay? It's not, you don't have to be super ah, crazy, you know? We have time, we have some time to observe it, we have some time to look at it, to think about it, right? And then let me try and for starters, make a clear border on the roof of the car. So this is the roof. Let me just lift back a bit of the wetness so that we can have that separation, okay? Now, let me start charging the top area with a bit more paint. And I think it should stay mostly above the car. Because I uh, lifted back some of that area, okay? Let me do that again just to make sure I there we go. And can we just go a little dark? Maybe let's start here. Let's get this tire in. And that second front tire, which I haven't drawn perfectly again. Uh, that's going to have an effect on the result. That's still okay. And let's paint for now around this little stripe line, whatever that is, but let's lift here just a bit to keep the shadow under the car, not in other places. Then we have the shadow under the other car that I barely managed to get into the painting, something like this. Then darkening a bit. Now we can get that 
power line or whatever that is a bit more controlled with a bit of thicker paint some of those details in the background same thing a little more controlled now this section starts to dry so I need to be very careful and just put in a few hints of details there's actually a car here you just see the shadow underneath this trash can or whatever that is on the right a little stronger but still not too dark shadow underneath it it's quite strong let's let this kind of do its thing now we're starting to venture into the more controlled stage okay so I'm gonna do my best this here should be more diagonal like that and that back window And remember that thing I taught you, as long as you move the brush, uh, the paint is not going to spread out too badly. So just another thing to have in mind. So if you can keep it moving, it will only spread when you lift it up. It's another useful trick. And we have that dark detail here. Not sure what that is. <laughs> Now the car at the back started disappearing a bit, so we'll, and I'm sorry if this is boring, I'm, I'm actually not sure, I'm honestly not sure if this is interesting to watch, because it really is watching paint to dry, that's what we're doing here, don't, don't kid yourself, right, um, but hopefully it's enjoyable, right, um, mm -mm -mm. yeah, we're good. So then, just a bit of darkness under that car. There's a hint of a, a back glass there. Um, this is clear enough. What I would do is maybe limit this area a bit more. Kind of constrain it a bit more like that. Keep it like that. Straighten out this edge. Now look at what happens here. We actually have a bit of a lighter section on the car. So I'm just going to come back with a moist brush and let's see if we can just help it lighten up a bit around this area. See? And I don't want on purpose to just lift, but I want to actually add a bit of water. Because I don't want to dry it. I just want to lighten it. Same here. We have a few light spots. Same here. Same here. That. See that now that starts to look like a car. A bit. It has a bit of a shadow here where the license plate is. And with a bit of luck and a bit of you know practice, you'll slowly carve out the scene. Okay? Uh, but the goal here is to keep things still quite muted, right? Now I'm gonna take a big risk and spray a bit. Because I want to make sure this spot here is a little darker and I couldn't do it before. This needs to be just a little bit darker. And now let's think of those lines that lead us into the painting. Uh, so I'm going to try. I'm going to dry my brush here and we'll give it a go. This kind of creates a ground, right? Uh, before that, you're just, what are you looking at? Everything floats. Same for this side. And this is gonna be a little, probably a few more attempts, but we'll see, like this, right? Now my impression isn't as clear as it could be around some of these areas. For example, here, ideally I would, would have wanted this background to be a little darker to really bring out the car. It's one of those things that when I paint normally, I think about, but when I have to deal with all of this, so much things going on simultaneously, I sometimes forget. Um, but yeah. It's moving. This is almost fully dry, so I'm not going to do anything here. Uh, this part is lost. What we can do is wait for it to dry, spray a bit, and then do it again. 
Uh, I mean, it's not lost, it's not terrible. Uh, it just could use some more work. But because we focused for so long on the cars, uh, it was a little hard to do both simultaneously. This here is still a little moist, so I can just bring out a bit of value there. And a bit of value here. Like that. And now the question is, do we want to maybe strengthen this shadow here? We're getting close to finished here, actually. Uh, you could continue on and on and on, but I, I feel like I'm, I've reached my max ability, uh, right? You could do better here, but uh, to me, I think that's that's where I'm at right now. Um, let me see here. Yeah, my shapes are a little off. I'm going to try and do this. Uh, fix here. This should be a little more diagonal. See, it's just a bunch of small fixes that will uh, sometimes lead you to the result. Poured a bit of water here. A bit of a risk again, but we'll see how that works. Out. Now I need some more paint. I'm going to go back to the chat soon, so don't worry. If you have a question or you're want me to talk to you more and yeah I don't know I like it uh, so this side of the car needs to be darker so let me do one last attempt of balance because this is way too uh, light that lower section can I get it to be just gently just a little bit darker so that it falls into place see much better much better, even though so much of my shapes are off, uh, that actually makes a lot of sense. What else? Um, I could do the same for this shape, but I, I kind of like it actually. I think that's it, let's let it dry. So as this dries, I'll go over some of your messages and then we'll bring back the previous attempt and we'll try and add some of those dots of, uh, you know, those water droplets on the window. Uh, let's see if we can create that focus effect, okay? So we actually have some highlights here we can use uh, by spraying. I created those. So interesting. Let's let this dry naturally, unlike the second one, the earlier one, and see what we can do. So let me grab my phone here and see what's up, see what you're saying. <laughs> I'm going to bring this like that so I can chill. Um, hopefully you can hear me well, though, because I think the audio comes from the computer. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, Ren G GSN says you make watching paint dry interesting. Cool, that's amazing. Uh, hi, more one, more one from Italy. Um, let's see what I missed. Happy anniversary, thank you, Jonathan too. Um, Okie doke. How do you know which side of the paper to use, or? you use just the clean side. Yeah, just the clean side for the most part. Uh, I don't worry too much about it. This came out of a pad that you rip the, the pages off of. So I just use the top side, right? If it's in a pad, it's pretty obvious, but if it's not, you know, you just use whichever side you want. I think most papers that are artist grade are meant to be used, you know, either way. I need to strengthen this edge here, see? And hopefully this dries well. There we go. It's a little, yeah. Um, but yeah, most uh, our Saunders Waterford, I know both sides work pretty well. A bit of a different texture though, a bit of a different feel. So it's interesting to try both. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, and how many cars? We talked about that. Virendra, how are you? That's a challenging edge for sure. Tangas is great. Thank you so much. GMFT, wow, you're almost there. Way to go. Thank you. Ramona, I'm going I'm gonna have to watch it uh, the rest later. Bye. We'll talk to you uh, hopefully in the next stream. Thank you for being here. Elena Fortuna, excellent uh, illustration. Thank you. Tangas says this is interesting. Thank you, Ren DSN. Uh, and I see Liron, you make me <laughs> watching dry paint in general. Thank you. Thank you, just chilling. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, who knew it's gonna be interesting, right, Yanina? Uh, 
Shelly says, it's very interesting. It's easier to see what's happening watching someone else do wet and wet than figuring out where I am when I do that technique. Yeah, for sure. And you really still want to think in terms of big shapes, right? So you want to um, look at the whole thing and figure out, okay, all the left section needs darkening, right? And then what's the next biggest shape? So the next biggest shape maybe is the street or the buildings that need to be one level darker, right? And then you think to yourself, what's the next step? And you keep going like this. By the way, look at this section. Got super lucky. It looks just like the reference photo, I think. This is really close. I got it really nice, just right here above the car. So sometimes you get a lucky break too. Um, Marjorie says, finally woke upstate New York here. We'll watch paint dry anytime with you. I see you're painting one of your favorite things, cars indeed. Uh, hey Nora, hello from Sweden. Pet are very helpful and interesting. Monica and Jay, it looks great. Love it. Thank you so much. By the way, there's a lot of people here, so I really appreciate it. More than usual. That's really cool. Thank you for tuning in. Usually when I do like a pure painting tutorial, it gets a little more action, so that's good. Um, Nancy G, I like it and I think it's a great reference photo. I think adding opaque red lights uh, here and there. And is there some yellow at the bottom right uh, would look cool. Yeah, there's a bit of it. Yeah. So the trick is how much, you know, I'm, I'm honestly not sure how much to add. We'll see. We'll figure it out. Um, Sujanith, excellent glow of light on the right side. Background looks uh, natural to me. Thank you so much. Christine, great looking painting. Uh, thank you. Marjorie Johnson, wondering how to use this lesson to paint people walking in the rain. Yeah, so it's going to be the same concept. Like this could be a person up close. Um, but first, again, if you're painting a scene, a full scene, first you got to treat the entire scene as it is, right? Then you can start addressing the people. So what you want to do is what I think what I did here is look at the values. That's the main thing I've been following here. To do this in color would be so much harder. So to make it a little easier on myself, I have treated it more like a value painting. And then you look at the person. How dark uh, is it compared to, is the person compared to the background or whatever? And you just go from there. The smaller the detail, the more accurate you need it to be. You have to wait a little bit more for it to start drawing. Right now, this is fully dry now. You can't do anything with it, but wetter than this, but not fully uh, because you have no shot of getting the people while I put these buildings in, right? When I put the buildings in, it was super flowy and everything moved around, right? So you have to wait for that right timing. I think that's the key here. Um, Lori, glad to see you using travel brushes at home. Yeah, I always do this. I don't know why. John says, such a complex scene looking great. Thank you. Thank you, Javi Jav. How are you doing? Thank you, Ayush. Uh, uh, Mark, arriving late again as usual, we'll have to watch it all later. Painting sure looks great. Thank you. Good. Thank you so much. Robin here. Hey, Liron. I lost you for several months. So glad to find you again. I still love watercolor uh, watching you uh, uh, work. Thanks. So this is my opportunity to ask for something a little selfish. Not really selfish. I'm just curious to hear your thoughts. If you're watching a lot of YouTube videos, not just for painting, so just entertainment, like you have uh, people you follow, vloggers, artists, whatever it is. If you listen to podcasts on the platform, and by the way, look at how this drive, I think pretty nice, no green, right? So if you're using YouTube a lot, I want to get your thoughts on this. I've been feeling, especially in the last two weeks or so, YouTube became boring. I go into the homepage and all I see is like viral videos. Instead of seeing my subscriptions, Instead of seeing the people I really care about. So, for example, I love listening to people talk about the Pokemon uh, trading card game and talk about the Pokemon market. Uh, instead of seeing those, I get all sorts of, you know, viral kind of gener general generic videos, especially in the shorts, but also on the homepage. And I hate it. I have to look for interesting things because I like, you know, while I wash the dishes, uh, walk with Ruth. I hate that. And you say now that you lost me for a few months. So I'm curious to hear, do you feel like that on your end? Do you feel like YouTube is starting to push more generic content? Or maybe it's starting to mix more content you're not subscribed to? Because I'm definitely not subscribed to a lot of the things I see in the homepage right now. And I don't like this. It's boring. I like my niches. You know, I like the things that I, that, that I watch. And I don't know. It's like YouTube tries to push on this more vanilla, boring kind of thing. So let me know your thoughts on that. I'm very curious to hear, actually. So you say, Robin, uh, hey, Liron, I lost you for several months. So I wonder, <laughs> I, I think what you mean by that is that you just weren't getting any of my videos recommended, I guess. Let me know, Robin, I'm curious. Because I see this with myself. I, I'm looking for the content I subscribe to. Does that make any sense? I mean, it's insane. Uh, I don't know. 
and rent. So Janet <laughs> says they're on. Have you seen Louise de Massy videos? She uses mostly wet and wet, beautiful results. I will um, look her up now so that I don't forget, so that I have it open for later. Let's see. Let's see what I'll get on the YouTube homepage this time. It's all boring stuff that I don't watch. I hate it. Uh, Louis de Massy watercolor. Oh, I think I watched one video of hers. Yeah. Oh, I know this one. Yeah. Uh, with the flo amazing florals. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. I'll, I'll look into more of her work because it's been a while since I watched. Um, Agnes uh, says, your painting looks good. Such a tricky technique, but you make it look so doable. Thank you for taking the time to do this demo. Very kind of you. My pleasure, really. It's fun. Dragonfly Art Cafe late, but wow, love what you have created. Hello, hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for being here. Mark, will you add the water droplets to the upper right in the white section? Yes. I think it's important to add it to everything. And it's almost dry, so we can almost get started soon. I think it's important to edit everywhere, so I will edit here as well. Here, the darks are gonna pop, and here the lights are gonna pop. Uh, hey Chuck, how are you? Uh, I see your message. Uh, neat, cool, sharp, yeah, first. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. How are you feeling? Let me know, keep me posted. Uh, I don't think I missed an email, but if I have, I will check. Gail, late to the party. Happy New Year, everyone. Liron painting looks great. Thank you so, so much, Gail. Uh, Linda, wonderful demo. How much does it help if the 120 watchers hit like? Yeah, it really does help. Thank you so much. If you can take a moment, like this video to make sure that you will get more of my videos, that would be great. If you if you want to get more, of course. If you don't, that's fine. But if you do hit the like button, it really helps the live stream. Because what happens is usually I'll end the live stream with like 500 views, maybe. An amazing one would be 700. Usually it's like three to 500. And then like 24 hours later it's around uh, 1k 2k so that really helps for that growth after it ends so thank you so much and it also helps while it's lives by the way thanga says you're correct uh musik hi Ron. thanks for sharing your painting process very generously sujanith also agrees so true youtube is very tricky I, even i noticed yeah so thanga and sujanith you feel the same uh and i see i have noticed a shift in the youtube algorithm virendra yeah that's true to MFT, yeah. yeah, I don't know why. It just started happening in the last couple of weeks, two or so. Uh, Jonathan, my problem isn't so much YouTube algorithm as Instagram. <laughs> One cat reel, no, it's just all cats. Oh yeah, that's definitely a thing. So Instagram is much more, I feel, elastic. It will change immediately. With YouTube, I thought we had the privilege of, you know, subscribing and then having that be most of your feed, but... Uh, Dragonfly Art Cafe, it's because people are taking a break for the holiday. So YouTube does push out other videos. Interesting. Interesting. I haven't noticed it last year. So I wonder if it will reset. If it does, I sure hope it will. Uh, Sujanith, I beg you to interview Luis de Masi. I'll, I'll, I'll look into that. Uh, I will try and reach out. Yep, that could be fun. I will, I will watch a few more of our videos to get an idea if we can build an interview and that will be great. See, Rogo, I do watch YouTube a lot. For art and cooking, I mostly don't look at the homepage. I mostly just look at my notifications and recommendations. Cool, good to know. Uh, Eileen Collins, I go straight to my subscriptions and when something is selected, the new ones are more relevant. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, I don't do that. I look at the homepage, but I, I may do it, yeah? Uh, John says, yeah, YouTube also pushes generic videos on my homepage. Oh man. Marjorie, when I go to YouTube, I get mostly what I look for. Art, anthropology, cooking shows, shell TV vlogs, uh, and narrow boats. Yeah, okay, good, I'm happy for you. Uh, okay, let's take a break, Lori. I'll, I'll continue from your message. Um, let's do the water droplets. What do you say? I'm just going to give this the 5%, less, last 5% drying. We'll do this first and then we'll do the previous one, okay? Just because this is the main one, I guess. So just one second, I'm going to mute you. Okie doke. Now one more thing to have in mind. Just because this dry doesn't mean we can't continue. You can always spray a bit and add more paint, right? So this section needs to be darker or this one. A lot of it could be much darker. Um, so just generally speaking, feel free to do that. That's, that. that's definitely something you can do. This tire requires some attention. All you have to do is really just pre-wet a bit, 
Don't mess with it too much so that you lift the paint pre-wet and do it, okay? I can show you real quick, even though I don't know if anyone cares about that, but because I know a lot of people are scared of it. So all you really have to do is just pick up a bit of clean water if you can. And then you very gently just do one swoosh or two and very thick paint here see tighten up the shape of the tire and it will blend out in your in the area you define right uh, and let's just help it move a bit so let's get to the droplets we'll let this kind of dry on its own and start working on them so let me zoom in here on my reference interesting so we have some very interesting patterns here so if I look at and I'm gonna use my white gel pen this time I'm gonna be lazy okay it's just easier and here's how I see the droplets and maybe I'll need to zoom in a bit so you can see what I'm doing let me zoom in a bit Good. So hopefully now you're a little just a touch closer and honestly, we can get rid of this reference photo because, I mean, we, we're not using that. Let's be honest here. We're using just the um, black and white. Now, I do want to make sure. I don't know why it doesn't autofocus. My camera is so weird. Will you focus for us? Okay, good. So let's get going here. Um... So I want to show you, and you can open up your your reference photo in a separate tab and maybe look at it large, but the top part has the light on the lower section. That's at least the way I see it here. So what happens is we get this pattern of something like this. Right? And we can use again some of these highlights as the bottoms of the drops and they do have a varied shape but generally speaking we're talking about this kind of a thing and they're not too big and then to complete them all you have to do is really darken the top. In some cases here, you won't even have to because it's dark already from the background, but we can, we can give it a try. So I just spread these out. Hopefully you can see something. Sorry that I know it's super low quality. That's just my silly Logitech camera. And the fact that there is no natural light right now. So sorry about that. Let me jump to the newer comments and then we'll revisit. So then on top of that droplet, which hopefully you can see, we have the droplet here. And then on top of it, we have a bit of darkness. And it may be just a drop of darkness or sometimes I see stripes. Sometimes I see, because it reflects what's behind it in a way. Uh, reverses it probably so the sky is, is the light part you see below um, yeah this effect is weird it's tricky now for the top for the droplets here uh, you don't get you don't see the white because everything is white but here's what you do see you see the top of the droplet and a bit of its side so you see something like this fairly light it's gonna dry a little lighter right but hopefully that kind of gives you the feel of droplets. You have to do this enough for the effects to kind of take place. Because right now it may seem like random details. Um, but the important thing is that because this is lighter... You know, it's a good question. I think because the highlight is on the lower section, actually. Now here's something interesting. This is an interesting area. Because what you'll get is, you get dark on top, and then light on the bottom now the reason I'm using a gel pen here is not only because it's easier but also because my uh, opaque paint is a little warm and that's gonna stick out here 
See, these look like droplets, I think. Right? They look nice and they look focused. That my, uh, as I mentioned, my opaque paint is a little warm and I think that's gonna stick out and not look, stand out a little too much in this kind of a scene. Now here I do see some very dark dots on some of the droplets, so we'll try this. And there's really no way around this if you're trying to get this kind of an effect. You're gonna have to work like very, it's, it's very tedious. It's very tedious and that's just a part of it, right? Uh, so you, you'll have to take your time and and do all of these small, you know, tons of these drops. Uh, I'm not going to do all of them. Uh, I'll just give you a nice sample size so you can... Uh, nice sample size quantity so that you can kind of figure out how to do this on your own. Some of the darker details within those drops. See? Just adding a few of them. I even see some really clear stripes reflecting what's in the background. In some of them that's a really cool effect but that's the thing our brains just know how to interpret stuff so all you have to do is give it something to play with and have a bit of trust in yourself and most likely the effect will work okay um, there are some very interesting droplets here on the lower section that are reversed so here we have the light on top and maybe a bit on the bottom too that's one drop you see a few of these and again feel free to open up the reference on your end uh, let's do this not too much pattern like not too much repetitiveness and then in between you get a bit of a, the dark section what is that and above see well, let me switch over to my camera and see uh, I think that makes sense right that looks like drops I just don't know why it doesn't focus so let me do this manually darn it let's focus manually this time I don't like using manual focus but we have no, ch no choice here focus don't do the auto thing there we go there we go now we're talking Right now we're talking. That's it. Save. Now you can see what I'm doing. See this? These definitely look like drops, right? These two. I think that looks good. Uh, now these don't look as much, so let me see what I'm doing wrong. Maybe I just shouldn't add the dark above them. Maybe I should let them be like, you know, just as dark as the background is. I think, I think that's what I'll do. But yeah. Some of these have really interesting shapes. And try to avoid patterns. This is super random. Don't go like, don't do three at the same line or, you know, try and really mix it up as much as you can. I, it's very hard sometimes to do. We have a tendency to go to patterns and really uh, resort to doing things that are very even. Don't do that, really. Try and struggle. See three in the same general height. That's not good. Spread them out. Right. Sometimes it takes a few moments to get in the mood of doing this, but once you do that, it will really look good. So not so much of a moon shape, maybe just uh, like dots even. And then up top, a bit of a darker paint. Here, especially where it's light, you can go a little darker, I think, above like this. Here it will make more sense. See? That looks like drops, I think. Or maybe there's a mid-value section in the middle and then dark up top. Like a gap. See? But hopefully that works then. And that looks like uh, water droplets. You know. Tedious. <laughs> repetitive. That's just what you gotta do. But I think it starts to really acquire that look. So now think about this. Add three times more drops and you're there and I think the feeling of focus is also there right so if I just add more it's just about adding more I don't think I'll bore you with adding all of these it's just redundant if you want to me to let me know but we can move on to the previous one or 
let's let's devote all our time to this. So let me read a few comments and see where we're at, and then I'll decide how to continue. Uh, some droplets on the white of the car. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that too in just a few seconds. Um, let's go from the end to the top. Uh, Pet R, this is so helpful. I would have used masking fluid for each drop, but this is way better. Yeah, definitely. No need to. Just just have an opaque paint that's neutral or use just a white gel pen. It works well. As far as I know, these pens are archival, so it should be good enough quality to stand the test of time. It's acid-free, if I'm not mistaken. Don't, don't quote me on that. You need to check, but I think this will last. Uh, I remember checking once, and it was that the, the condition. Otherwise, I wouldn't have used these so much. Um, this paint deserves to be completed. Yeah, I will, I will. Uh, Monica, I love how you do water drops. Looks very realistic. Thank you. Maybe the dark side of the drops should be a, uh, a bit less dark. Yep. Oh, Sandro, you're right, my friend. We will get the balance right eventually. <coughs> uh, I agree with you. Everyone really embraces the nature of watercolor. Thank you. Uh, Allison says, these droplets look great, better than the photo, and really make sense of the blurry background image. Yeah, I think so, too. It really puts it in the right context. Tanga, I keep watching the circle and head drawing. I like it very much. Oh, cool. Thank you. Um, Pat R, don't like Louise's uh, paintings as much. Okay, yeah, it's a matter of personal taste, I guess. I also like the more... Um, it's not as much of a strong, vibrant color, more impressionistic, but definitely a matter of taste. Uh, Chimefti says, your videos always come up to the homepage, though, because I always watch every new one. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. I've heard many people say they don't, so I'm happy that for you it works. Life is fun. What is shown on the homepage also depends on what you watched before, so I try to keep the YouTube history clean. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Josephine, yes, it's like they don't know me anymore. Oof, definitely. Alessandro, we both like the video game The Witcher 3. Have you watched the series on Netflix? I subbed to Netflix one month ago and I'm almost at the end of the first season. It's cool. Yeah, I watched maybe two episodes and then we kind of stopped. Um, don't know why. It wasn't that, uh, didn't catch our attention enough and then we moved on to other things. But it, it, looked, it looked good. It looked decent. Um, so maybe we'll uh, revisit that. Uh, Chuck, you say you will know the result in about eight weeks, so good luck. Let me see. Finished chemo and radiation. Awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're, we're still in the waiting uh, stage. I remember. I remember, yeah. Okay, yeah. A bunch of YouTube comments. Pigeonhole recommendations. Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. Uh, remove it. I'm not interested. Yeah, I should do that. Allison, I completely forgot about that. I should do that and tell them more. Okay. Let's continue. Let's continue with the droplets. I think people are enjoying them. I've only been successfully painting droplets digitally, so I find it very impressive seeing people do it traditionally. I personally find it quite hard. Yeah, it is a challenge. But again, you have a lot of means at your disposal to make it work with watercolor. So, you know. So let me uh, go ahead and just fill this in. I'm going to try and work a little faster on these droplets. I want to take this to a stage where I can honestly say it feels complete. Um, so I'm just gonna fill everything up and there are a lot of small ones too So let me just tap them in here and there and then we'll figure out a good way of doing this again If you don't want to be super slow is to put in first all of those lighter sections Lighter dots and then come back and complete the other side of it so to speak, right? Um, that's just way more effective, and I'm not too worried about, you know, if I don't remember to work on each and every dot, that's just, you know, it's impossible to really put everything in. Unless, of course, you know, you devote days, weeks, which you may like to do, right? I'm uh, more of a faster painter, but uh, I know for some people that patience really pays off, and that's how they enjoy it, and I do think there's, there really is an abundance of ways to paint watercolor. So uh, don't let anyone tell you that your way is wrong. Just find, you know, find what works for you. Honestly, that's the best way to go here. Uh, so yeah, I think we're getting to a close, uh, to be close to the amount of white. At least the way I kind of envision it. Maybe a bit more here. We do see a bit more. And then we'll do the other side of things, which is adding those dark but this I think the effect really works well now let me put in a few large drops like these they really I think um, clarify things right they make things look much more and you also see a few um, blended light so let me try and get that into because that's something I haven't shown you uh, and after that we'll 
start moving towards wrapping it up. Um, the larger droplets really bring out, you know, the the logic of it all. So I think they're very important. I think without them, it wouldn't have worked. Um, so yeah, this really looks like, you know, the, the play of focus and all of that. So here's what I'm going to do. I want to, and I may regret this, but I want to bring out those tail lights. Now I can use just this white paint. Maybe I can smear that around to see that worked really nice. Let's do this as well. Vaguely in the right spot, but you know what? I think I'll need it to be lighter. So let's try this out. I don't do a lot of this kind of lifting. Um, uh, I'm not even sure I'll manage to lift that much, but let's try. There we go. But the key here is that it should be larger. See, there's a large, the, the tail lights of this car, they're really, really obvious. And, and I like that effect. So I'd like to get, see, that looks so much better. Mm, maybe we can add a bit of the white paint over it to, to make it a little lighter. But see, I love that blended effect. One of them is a little stronger than the other, so let's get the other here a little weaker. And again, this takes time, right? And I can use my lifting brush, it's just a little too big so for this particular purpose, so I'll wait on that. And you can also use uh, your fingers sometimes to lift these kinds of things. Now, this feels light enough, but if you want to make sure, just go ahead and do this, right? Just make it a little lighter, and now it feels like a bl blurred light on the car. There's a lot you can do here, actually, to improve the background, right? Forget about the droplets that we're still, we haven't finished with. You can do a lot to improve the rest. So let me switch over to the reference once again. Um, so here, especially on the uh lighter sections this will really help it look a little better like here and make a lot more sense these droplets and where it's already dark it's not as necessary simply is not that important uh, as for these sections kind of the same these kind of the same i do see some droplets that are like rounded that's interesting. Here as well. Let's add those tops of the droplets. And you can always let it dry and then come back and add if you want to. Uh, maybe get a few more, again, dark details within the drops. Because I do see some of that reflected, which is a really cool little effect. And again, try to vary those shapes, you know, make them interesting as much as possible. Yeah. yeah, I think we're we're close. We're really close. I think we're close to where we can stop. Feels good. We can do this all day long, but I think we got the idea. Um, just a lot of large drops. That's the thing I'm seeing, like a lot of really larger drops. That's the thing I'm missing here. Yeah, I hope that makes sense. Let me know. So it's been a fun one. Wasn't expecting this good of a result, honestly. Because the initial control wet and wet is super challenging. Yeah, that's much better. That's much better. We needed larger droplets. So it's one of these things you just discover. And I've been wanting to paint this kind of a scene for a while now. So the next time I tackle it, I'll know that the the droplets need to really have presence very often it is important for them to show right the dots aren't enough if you just fill it up with dots it won't make full sense so that's actually a great lesson for me um, so yeah two more a little too strong but they will dry lighter of course and yeah, we're good. I'm happy. I'm really happy. I think this turned out really well. So let me go over some
comments before we wrap it up just for comparison here's the previous attempt i don't think we need to add drops to it uh, now as for the red i'm not sure how i would add it honestly um i think i'll skip it for now i'll experiment at my own leisure afterwards i think but look at how spraying worked like there's some really beautiful effects in the background too like this drop here looks really cool um there's a lot here that works really well in my opinion uh, the yellow the same maybe i can glaze a very thin layer of yellow just super thin over it you know it will still make sense let's try it out why not so i'm gonna need myself some yellow and it's fairly muted right don't let that make you think it's a strong yellow it's not that strong add a bit of red to make it a little orange a little warm let's see if it makes sense Yeah, to me it just isn't as important. Let me see it on the screen. Nah, eh, I don't care for it. Doesn't doesn't matter to me as much. Well, we'll leave it. It's already here. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna call this one done. Sign it. Remove the tape. Now, should I sign it? it I'll sign it in dark, not in light, because that's gonna. I feel like, or hmm, yeah, that's gonna take away from the droplets, or not. Should I sign it dark or light? I'm not sure. Let me know. Let me know in the comments. Um, thank you, Virandra. Thank you so much. Just chilling. Wet and wet gives this uh, painting this ethereal vibe. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thank you, Pat R. Thank you, just chilling. Artsy, thank you so much for being here. Uh, Sujanith, thank you. John, thank you so much. Marjorie, thank you. Liron teaches me to be more painterly. Not if I could. Now, if I could get stronger, so I could paint again, I could paint along again. Yeah, definitely. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I hope you'll get uh, better and stronger, and then you can join me. Uh, Chimefti says you could also spray them with white paint on a toothbrush. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, random. The only thing is you'll need the large droplets to, to add later on. I don't know how to spray them where I want, though. Any ideas? Yeah, I would just go like this. You could just block out some things like just literally put something here and protect an area you don't want to spray on uh, and then go with either a toothbrush and an opaque paint like um, either gouache I think or acrylics won't work with watercolor um, yep that's one possibility um, I haven't watched Arcane just chilling um, or when how do you paint and talk at the same time I'm not able to do it yeah it's with practice I was able to do that and no worries your English is great um yeah yeah thank you so much everyone i really appreciate it if you have any kind of final questions feel free to ask but i think we will start moving towards wrapping it up um not sure sign in dark let's sign it with dark i'll go um i'll go with ambit's suggestion and sign it in dark but not too dark probably and then we'll remove the tape Hopefully the result will be good. I'm going to sign it with this smaller brush. I love this one. As always, be sure to check out my courses if you want to learn how to paint, how to draw. Links in the description. Um, and watercolor realism course will be out uh, in the not too far future. Um, so look forward to that. Hopefully it will fulfill its task. We're teaching you how to paint realistically in a way that, uh, in a process that is very achievable. So you can follow, al follow along, know what you're doing, not be too confused, right? I'm really hoping for this course to start 2022 with a bang uh, and help a lot of people. There we go. The last name really takes long to sign and it's dry so we can remove the tape. I wonder what this will look like scanned because our scanner is kind of hit and miss, uh, but hopefully it will look good. Yeah, so here is the final result without the tape. I have so much work to do. I'm going to go back to as soon as this stream ends. 
hilarious. I have so much to work on. But yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Again, some darks could have been pushed before we put the drops. You know, spray a bit. Um, or or pre-wet once again. One layer above. And then add whatever you need. If you need a darker value somewhere. It's still doable even after you finish that initial uh, wet and wet. Of course, it's better if you can get everything there. But, you know, it's better if, uh, if you can paint like... Uh, like John Singer Sargent, that'll be ideal, but it's just not as attainable always. It takes time to get to that level, so yeah. Happy New Year, everyone, because the next time I'll see you uh, on Saturday, it's going to be 2022, and I won't say Happy New Year because I forgot, because I pre-recorded the video, so just know I love you all very much, uh, and I hope we can... Uh, we can continue in 2022 to do uh, many of these live streams. Sujanis says, I wish you could do wet and wet for the red lights. You can uh, wet small uh, small area and put color there, I think. Yeah, definitely, that could work. You know what? Let's try it out. Let's try it out just to conclude. So I'm going to look at the reference photo. The thing is that the red paint there, it's not even red. It's more of a, of a white. It's super light. So you have to keep it fairly light. So here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lift back this tail light here why not I mean it's a pretty prominent feature in the painting so I might as well do it so I'm gonna, I'm gonna lift back that area I already started concluding that's always how it happens bit of paint see and I'm gonna lift back make it super light this is a new piece of paper and then after we have it much lighter we'll do some red around and see if we can make it feel at least like a tail light, you know? I may have to resort to using some opaque paint there or some of my white gel pen there. So this looks to me light enough. Let's use my uh, lifting brush. It should work well for this small of an area. Sorry for anyone who bailed out. Because I was concluding it's not your fault. Uh, but yeah. I'm going to share, of course, the end results on Instagram and other places. So don't worry. We'll get to see it. Yeah. Now, on to that. Question is, where do I put the red? I think I should put it around this, this shape. And hopefully it will work out. So I'm going to clean a well, believe it or not. I'm cleaning the palette. Who would have thought? And then I'll need some pure light pyrrole scarlet. And it needs to be fairly light. So we'll start with that and we'll see how it goes, right? Could have done this wet and wet you were right actually so let me let me just wet this area a bit and then yeah, i don't even know if that makes sense you know it was never that great at this effect because it's too dark that's the thing it's way too dark this red so let me lift that Yeah, it's too dark, I think. Um, I'm tempted to just bring my uh, acrylics, you know, it's funny. To just bring my acrylics here and use a very light acrylic paint, but yeah, I don't know. I think it would have worked if I darkened the rest a little more. But I haven't. So yeah, let's keep it like that. I don't want to mess around with it too much. Could work actually here with these lights maybe. I don't know. I want to try it. Let's see just one thing. If I take just the center. Yeah, it's not light enough I feel like. Maybe it's enough here but not. No. Yeah, I don't know. Feels too dark. 
Maybe I chose the wrong color. Maybe I need something with a bit more vibrancy to it. I don't know. I'll try and figure it out. And if I do find it, I'll, I'll share with you the result. Uh, but I can see it. Thank you so, so much, everyone. We're going to wrap it up. I'm going to return to some work. So, Janith, my bad for... For... Try. I tried. I tried. Maybe next time. Oh, who asked for it? Wasn't you, so Janith? I don't remember. Sorry. Yeah, okay. I got it right. But in any case, thank you so much. We'll wrap it up. I will see you on Saturday's video. Don't forget, if, you, if you're if you new here, subscribe and hit the bell button to receive those notifications. If YouTube, you know, screws you over with the recommendations, at least you'll get notified when I post new videos. We'll see you again real, real soon. So take care.